all enjoy hearing big success stories, but the truth is, not every story is successful. In fact, the majority of stories revolve around failure or mediocre results at best. And you know what? There is nothing wrong with that. In this video, I'm going to share my own unsuccessful story about how I miserably failed at being a psychotherapist. The purpose of this video is ironically psychotherapeutic. It's for all those who are currently struggling or not succeeding. Just remember, you are not alone. Additionally, this video will reveal some insider information about what it's really like to be a psychotherapist. So stick around. Before diving into the story, let me provide some context. Naturally, before failing at this field, I had to become a psychotherapist first. So how did it happen? To cut the story short, while stuck at some boring, monotonous job, I dreamt of finding one that I could be passionate about. For some reason, the field of psychology seemed incredibly appealing. I mean, who wouldn't want to know and to understand why we humans are so messed up in the head? So when I moved to a new country, Spain in my case, I decided to pursue a degree in psychology. I must tell you, I really enjoyed studying it. After completing my bachelor's degree, I readily enrolled in a psychotherapy school, where I learned rational emotive behavioral therapy, one of the classic CBT methods. It was not only super fun, but also incredibly useful for me personally. I improved my own mental health just by learning rational philosophy of Albert Ellis. However, when I started my own practice with clients, I discovered something unexpected. I didn't enjoy being a psychotherapist. So you may ask, what on earth happened? You invested so much time and money to pursue this career path just to find out you don't quite like it? To answer shortly, yes. But let me elaborate a bit more. Before I got into the psychology counseling field, I only saw the beautiful side. I was thinking about how cool it would be to help people with their daily struggles, uh, provide them with some effective tools for handling anxiety and beating depression, all while making some cash. Sounds awesome, right? But hold up. While all that positive stuff is true, there are some difficulties and complications I never saw coming and couldn't handle. What are they? Let's get into it. First off, the real cases you deal with as a psychologist or psychotherapist are often way different from what you studied at school. They can be more complicated and outside the typical mental health problem you read about. Plus, they hit you with an emotional weight that you better be ready for. What do I mean? When you talk about clinical cases uh, in classes with your mates or professors, it doesn't prepare you for the emotional reality of your first clients. It's one thing to discuss theoretical cases of suicidal thoughts or eating disorders. And it's a whole different story when you've got a person right in front of you dealing with that stuff. It's one thing to think about the challenges of mental health problems and another to really feel it, feel and see all the tough circumstances and deep pain someone is going through. If you are a sensitive and highly empathetic person, handling this heavy emotional reality might not be a walk in the park. I'm not saying it's impossible, uh, you can certainly train yourself for it. But until you actually start working with clients, you won't know how easy or tough it will be for you. No school lectures are gonna prepare you for that. I personally thought that I was perfectly capable of not letting the client's problems affect me too much. But that's only because I did not have to face so much pain and trauma in my everyday life before I became a mental health professional. And that's what you'll be dealing with as a therapist. So get ready for that. The next difficulty that kinda caught me unprepared was the wide range of resistances and very different views on the world and on people that clients might have. Some of these views 
might represent rigid, rude beliefs that are not letting people get better. Like, for example, a rude belief that being gay is a sin. In this specific example, you can see a potential conflict. As a therapist, you have to respect all religious beliefs. At the same time, to help a person get better, you should also assist them in making some rigid beliefs more flexible, like in the case of having a gay son. In some cases, it's just not possible to advance without it. And this is just one small example. The number of reasons due to which a client might experience difficulties in advancing is infinite. They might not be willing to flex any of their rigid dysfunctional beliefs. They might want you to do all the job for them, expecting unrealistic results, like not feeling negative emotions at all. Or they might find it hard to understand some things that you try to explain them during the psychoeducational phases of therapy. Remember, real people are nothing like your classmates. They don't have the same background and they don't necessarily easily understand some things that might seem basic to you, like, for example, the emotions they are feeling. So it takes a lot of effort, talent and experience to become an efficient psychotherapist for a wide range of people. I'm not trying to paint it as a bad thing, but it's something to keep in mind if you are planning to become a successful practitioner in the mental health field. And the last thing I want to mention, and probably the main reason why I decided to quit giving counseling sessions, at least for now, was the discomfort of the feeling of responsibility that I started to experience. While in other areas is generally considered to be a very healthy thing to have a strong sense of responsibility, in psychotherapy it might play a bad trick on you. With every new client, I felt responsible for their improvement and their well-being. I found myself spending much more time than strictly working hours, thinking about their situations, designing possible therapy ways, and basically worrying about them. And at some point, I just noticed that it's affecting my own mental health. You might say that you should have resolved these issues with your own therapist or a supervisor, and you would be right. I actually presented these problems in my supervising sessions, but I found out that there was something else behind this extra weight of responsibility that I put on myself. I found out that I just don't feel comfortable in the role of a counseling psychologist. If you are planning to become a therapist, you should know that many clients will see your figure as their potential savior or their biggest hope to make their life better. If you are uncomfortable with this, or if you don't know how to effectively manage their expectations of you and your role, being a psychotherapist is probably not for you. In my case, I found out an interesting thing. If I had an especially successful session with a client, instead of feeling satisfied and proud of my work, I felt worse. I felt worse after hearing all the kind words of how happy they were to have met me and started a therapy with me. Their hopes in me just inflated the already great sense of responsibility I experienced. So at some point, I just had to honestly admit to myself that I don't feel comfortable being a psychotherapist. And what is worse, that I don't even have the motivation to learn how to deal with it. Basically, I came to realization that being a psychotherapist is just not something I like. Well, guys, despite this story might sound kinda sad, indeed it's not. I do believe that it's always better to have courage to admit that something is not making you happy, rather than insisting on keeping on just because you've invested your time and money in it. There are always some other roads left, although they won't be what you planned initially. So if you are a psychology student, I hope I gave you some interesting information to think about, to prepare yourself better for your future practice. And if you are also a frustrated psychologist like me, just know you are not alone and it's more common than you think. Use your knowledge to take care of your own mental health and keep
Keep monitoring life for new opportunities.